A lot of people have been looking at flight data from the night of the Las Vegas shooting. What I've done here is I've recorded flight data from that night. And you'll notice here it says Monday, October 2nd, 4.43 a.m. That's because this is in UTC time. So I've translated that into local time on October 1st. So take a look at some of this data that we're going to look at that shows flight tracking from the night of that shooting. We're going to notice a number of things in this data that just seems weird. There's a number of anom anomalies that we should pay attention to because I think they give a bigger picture of what may have happened. Here we see one helicopter leaving Maverick helicopters, a second helicopter getting ready to leave, and you can see their call signs, their tail numbers. That third one turned its transponder on a little bit late. So those three helicopters depart at about 9.40 p.m. from Maverick Helicopters, which is right here. And you'll notice that they're gonna come back around from the north. And they're going to stop directly behind the Mandalay Bay. So this first one hovers right there, right over Mandalay Bay, uh, right over the event center kind of oval shaped roof. Here comes the third and the fourth. Notice that first helicopter, what happened is it turned off its transponder. These other two are about to do the same and they turn off their transponders as well. And they remain there, no transponder signals come back on for the duration of the shooting. So they, they turned off their transponders at about 9.52 and no more transponders will appear in that area. But what's interesting is that even though we have no radar data showing flights in that area, video evidence clearly shows flights being in that area during the shooting. Now I want you to notice from this clip here that I'm sharing, the airspace there behind in between Mandalay Bay and Delano, you can see aircraft in the air and you can see flashes that are inconsistent with beacon flashes that look more like muzzle flashes coming from that area. You see him flash cons like randomly, not consistently, and faster than an aircraft beacon typically will flash. But yet the flight data doesn't show any aircraft in that area. There's one, there's some right there behind Mandalay Bay over the top of it. And there was some in between earlier. There was actually one flash you could see that comes from the suite adjacent to Paddock suite as well. That looks exactly the same as the muzzle flashes or what appears to be muzzle flashes coming from the sky. Now I want to get back into some radar data to further examine anomalies seen on that night. So we have this one helicopter returning to the area but we don't know what helicopter that is, and then it heads back up north. It kind of came out of nowhere, no call sign. And then we see that again, a separate helicopter, different timestamp again, heading up north, no call sign at all. And then just for a little while in this clip, there's no real action going on. Note again that there's no aircraft hovering behind Mandalay Bay. This is still five minutes before the shooting, but still no aircraft showing up on radar there. So there should theoretically be no aircraft there, but of course that's not what we saw in the video. Two more no call sign helicopters, presumably the two we saw head up north, come back and land over there by Maverick helicopters again. And here we are 10.05 when the actual shooting started. The shooting started right about 10.05 on the dot. I've been able to match that up with other videos as well as data from fitness trackers and things of the like to show that the shooting really did start right about then. Still, no helicopters, no aircraft behind the Mandalay Bay, 10.09 now. About to be 10.10 and no aircraft behind the Mandalay Bay. This is during when that clip that I showed earlier, 10.10, 10.11, that we can see those aircraft back there behind the Mandalay Bay. Now we're gonna see something interesting. A group of eight helicopters take off from Maverick Helicopters. I've written down and I've cross-referenced the call signs of all eight of these aircraft. That's the third one. That's the fourth one. A fifth one pops up. No call signs. Six and seven and eight 
are there's the eighth right there. So what we see is all three call signs from the original three helicopters that were behind Mandalay Bay that never returned show up there. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking about the helicopters that landed near Maverick helicopters, but they did not actually land at the Maverick helicopters location where these aircraft took off. They landed over here. So how did they get back over there? And they magically appear back on radar just after the shooting stopped at 1016. Another interesting thing that I noticed was that the last helicopter in the original group of three, call sign N848MH, actually turns its transponder on, pops up right there. It just popped up, and I'll show that to you frame by frame here. But it's like it never actually took up from Maverick Hel took off from Maverick helicopters, but perhaps left the shooting scene and joined that group formation and turned its transponder on right when it got into that group formation. One more very interesting thing that we see here, we're going to see pretty soon an, what looks to be an airline coming from the right. And it's going to be masked as a Southwest Airlines flight. It's going to enter frame here in just a second. It's going to be coming at the airport from a little bit of an angle. And it is, is bearing the call sign of a Southwest Airlines flight. The problem is, as we'll watch here in just a second, the maneuvers that it pulls are impossible. So there it is, it just entered frame, it's coming in towards the airport, and you will see the call sign here when my mouse hovers in just a second, right there, it's a Southwest Airlines flight. Look at the turn that it made, and then watch this. It's just gonna stop and hover. So it just stops and hovers there, and then it's going to turn off its transponder here in just a second. There it goes. So some helicopter purposefully masked its transponder as a Southwest Airlines flight, hovered over the Mandalay Bay, and then turned off its transponder. Now, this is after the official shooting timeline, but that's very odd. Also, what we see here is these helicopters that took off to the north coming back around. It looks like only five of them land when you actually look at the landing point, but it looks like actually what happens is a few of them turn their transponders off just before they land. And then that cop helicopter that just came in the middle and is now over Mandalay Bay is a Las Vegas Metro Police Department helicopter that just missed all the action. But that helicopter isn't without controversy as well. We're going to see that it hovers over the Mandalay Bay for a while here. It goes back and forth a little bit, presumably looking for shooters, responding to the police scanner audio, and uh, just trying to generally help out the situation. But eventually, that helicopter is going to land right next door to Maverick Helicopters. It's actually going to land in the shared parking lot which is shared with the Harley Davidson dealership there in Las Vegas. And there's actually video of it there. So we can confirm that it was there outside of the flight radar, which really is very, very reliable. So we don't really need to, but the video that helps us confirm it is very interesting because it shows people loading machine guns, light machine guns like M240 or M249 saws out of trucks getting ready to get into this helicopter. And it stops there for a couple of minutes and then it heads back out. Now surely the Las Vegas Metro Police Department didn't think that they would be able to shoot to the ground or to a hotel tower with a machine gun in the middle of Las Vegas. So that got me thinking, what would they, what were they thinking that they could do with those machine guns? And the only logical explanation that I could come up with is they were thinking they might have to engage air to air. So perhaps they knew about these helicopters and the weird things that were going on via the, the flight data, the flight radar. So here that helicopter, that police helicopter is heading down. It's going to take a look back at Mandalay Bay. And then it's going to kind of loop around and head down and land here right around 1050. So we'll watch it do that here for a second. And then I'm going to show you guys the clip that I referenced just before. So here it goes, and it's going to go ahead and land right there, right by Maverick Helicopters, about where those other helicopters took off, but it's actually just next door in a shared parking lot. So while that 
police helicopter was there, which we can, can be seen and heard in the background of this clip. We see these guys loading up with machine guns. And it's hard to see the guns, but right there you can see the gun that guy's carrying. That's not a standard AR-15 or sniper rifle. Uh, it's actually a belt-fed machine gun. So again, I ask myself, what is their plan? What do they think they can do with these machine guns from a helicopter in a populated Las Vegas metro area? I should also point out that I have verified the timestamp of this video on Instagram by viewing the source code on the Instagram website and by contacting the original shooter and poster of the video. So it is the same time this helicopter is there. So we're back to the time when the police helicopter landed here on the flight data. And what we're going to notice is we're not going to see that police helicopter's transponder turn on again until after it's in the air. So it's dark the whole time that it's landed in the parking lot. And it turns on its transponder again at 11.06 after it's in the air above Mandalay Bay, presumably looking for assailants. But again, what could they shoot at? They definitely can't shoot at a hotel or the ground with a machine gun in Las Vegas. So why load up machine guns into a helicopter? This is a very interesting thought. I don't have another explanation other than they were considering possibly having to engage another aircraft. It's either that or you believe that perhaps they shot to the ground but that would be kind of stupid considering we can see the police helicopter on this type of data. So the transponder turns back on 1105. It's back over Mandalay Bay. And it's presumably looking around. Uh, that was where the event happened. There hasn't been any shooting for almost an hour in that area. As far as the official story is concerned currently. And... It hovers, and it hovers, and it hovers. But eventually here, in a few minutes, it's going to make its way north over to the New York, New York area, as well as the Aria. So just north of the Mandalay Bay is the Luxor. We can see it's that black square building just north of Mandalay Bay, which he's right by right now. And then he's over by New York, New York. And interestingly, and the Aria now. And interestingly enough, this is the exact time that eyewitnesses report there being shooting in these casinos and lobbies. So perhaps this police helicopter was responding to those reports. But again, what is he going to shoot at? Unless he's doing the shooting that people reported, it doesn't make sense. So he's going to hover around a little bit more. Eventually, he's going to land back over where he landed before by Maverick Helicopters. And then a minute to two minutes later, he's going to head north on another assignment. Why did he land again? He spent a whole lot more time in that parking lot, enough time to get fuel if that's what he needed when they were loading up before. So he's going to go back down and, and land there after, of course, going up here and visiting the Tropicana around again when more shots were reported at that casino. And then he's going to head down and land. He's going to land just for a couple of minutes, and we'll watch that here. Right near where he landed before, kind of loops around. Maybe he had to just take a different angle. And he lands at about 1131, 1132. He's going to spend a minute or two there, and then he's going to head north to the Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, Summerlin area, presumably on another assignment, although I don't know what other assignment could be possible on a night like this. So there he is again, popped up like right before 1135. So he spent about two minutes there, presumably uh, offloading personnel. I don't know why else he would land, but he makes a brief stop over Tropicana and then heads north. I zoomed out here so you can see he heads north. He ends up over near the Summerlin area of Las Vegas. So we saw some pretty interesting things here. Some things that warrant an explanation from the people that were in these helicopters. Why haven't the police asked these questions? Why are we still flying blind 
and why doesn't the media care about evidence like this?